Well, the only problem I have, yeah, but I, I'm only seeing four of you guys right. at any one time. Despite that, that that Google extension that says grid view, I keep touching it and it's not doing a darn thing. So mm. same here. Is it crossed off or is it does it have a slide X for it? Um it has the a box where I could check it and when I check it, it doesn't do anything different. Hmm. <laughs> Okay, um, hit refresh up in the top. On like my browser refresh? Yeah, click your browser refresh, it'll kick you out for a second. And it should bring you back in. <laughs> should. Okay, she's brought in muted. And now, right next to participants, you should have the grid box. And that should be a toggle that you can toggle on and off. And you're muted. <laughs> there we go. Better. I'm back. No, um, I don't. I have the chat box. I have the participant window. Yeah. So maybe Dave, you can let me know until I figure that out. Yeah, you bet. I'll I'll help manage that. If I if I see somebody waving, I'll bring it to your attention. Okay, Tammy. Okay, that sounds good. All right. So we're at seven o'clock, and since we're all here, we can call the meeting to order. Um, do we have any changes to the agenda? Hearing none, we will go. I would need a motion. And and this is the other thing is when you speak, can you say who you are so Anne can um, make a record of that? So I need a motion to approve the minutes from March 4th, please. And remember to unmute yourself if you speak, please. Bjorn Barrett, so moved. Thank you, BJ. Is there a second? Anyone, please unmute yourself. Try something or not. <laughs> you know, I can't. I'll second, Andy. Thank you, Andy. Okay. Um, and then all those in favor of approving the minutes, and we'll go through. So, Andy, since you're unmuted, why don't you vote? Aye. Thank you. Um, BJ? Aye. Maria? Unmute. Aye. Thanks. Len? Aye. Get it some other time. George? Yeah, aye. Doug? Unmute, Doug. Are you there, Doug? He may be trying to figure out how to unmute. Okay, so we'll go. I don't see him anymore. Okay. Uh -huh. I see his see uh, his phone indicated. Yeah, I know he's out there. Okay, oh, well, I'm come back there to him. Adrian, are you there? <laughs> you have to unmute. Adrian, hover over your picture, and a little microphone will yeah. come up. You can click on. Well, we well we figure out technically how to unmute. How about um, John? Aye. Thank you, Adrian. Can you unmute? Can you unmute her, Dave? Or no? It. Uh, I am not allowed to unmute someone. I can just mute them. <laughs> <laughs> what power? I don't. Yeah, I don't know if that's a good superpower or not. I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. Oh, Hi. Can you hear me? Answer. Yes. Yes, now we can. Thank you. Okay, yeah, it's gone on twice, and then it unmutes or it mutes itself again. Um, I'm fine. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, is Doug there? Can you, Doug? Can you hear us? Can we hear you? Unmute yourself, please, if you'd like to vote. Not hearing Doug for right now. We will have the, Doug has abstained for right now. How's that? Since we can't hear from him so we can move on. Um, 
Anne, do we have any public input or announcements? Anne is shaking her head. No, we do not. Okay. Hearing none, we will move on. Um, so, uh, Dave, do you want to give us the superintendent update for the board, which is item five? Yes, thank you. Um, so first, hello to everyone. It's good to see you, even though we're not in hey, person. David, yes, sorry sir? to interrupt, um, but I do have a public member of the public that just texted me asking how to connect publicly. All right. Um, um, live. Oh, um, quickly. Live? Is this going live? I don't know if Brian's. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so the way to watch it live is through YouTube, which is at the top of the uh, the agenda, BJ. Um, okay. If you if you find the agenda that was sent out, there's a link to the, yep. the live YouTube feed. Are you good with that? Yeah. How was that sent out to the public out of curiosity? It was sent out to our normal list of public that receives the agendas and it was warned on the uh, the website like it normally is. Okay, that link's not on the website, is it? Uh, it should be on the website with the agenda that's posted on the website. Okay, thank you. Sorry to interrupt. Cool, you bet. Oh, no problem. I expect that we will have many, um, many um, different challenges as we navigate this process, so. Yeah, we'll probably get good at this right about the time, uh, you know, normalcy maybe returns. Um, but thanks to everyone. I, I sent you a long report just as a, a point of reference yesterday. Wanted to give you an update on kind of what the last few weeks for us have looked like, as well as draw your attention to um, specifically the continuity of learning plan that we submitted to the state. We are going to be putting that plan on our website after this meeting just so that it's accessible there. That's not necessarily something that many people will be interested in consuming, but we do want to have it um, available, you know, through that through that venue. Um, also wanted to make sure that you had kind of just a, a simple narrative from each school about what's going well and what the challenges are right now in each of our school settings. I think it's important that the board knows that we've worked really hard to make sure that we are trying to create balance for families and for educators. We're trying to be responsive to what we hear from people in terms of what's working and what's not working well. We are finding it nearly impossible to meet the needs of all parties in the process because everyone's needs are so divergent and unique right now, even though we all have this shared experience. But um, I really just wanted you to have kind of a sense on what some of the school play-by-plays look like. And I did ask Tyler, just as the principal of the largest school, I asked him if he would join us tonight, um, just in case you have any questions about how things are going at Mill River. And then finally, at the end of my report, um, you know, I address what we know will be the the, the coming fiscal pressures um, that are going to come on the back end of, of this. Some of the things I shared for you already is that the state's projecting a $40 million deficit in the Ed Fund for this particular school year. Um, how that plays out and what stimulus looks like for that, we don't yet know. And there's no way to know yet what that looks like for next year. Stan and Tammy and I are participating in a... Um, a webinar for board chairs, business managers, and superintendents tomorrow after tomorrow morning um, that is uh, supposed to be a forecast from the Joint Fiscal Office. So we'll have a better sense on some of the thoughts that they're having um, current status as of tomorrow. But right now, this is about as much as we know. We're anticipating things will be incredibly rough, uh, but we don't know what that means from a numbers standpoint. And uh, related to that, you know, there's a, a couple other linked items that I shared with you in the report. Um, that are tied to future actions that I'm asking for later in this agenda. One is about staffing recommendations. I'd like to ask for some conversation and um, possibly a stance from the board on that. And then um, a proposal for the end of the school year that I'd like to talk to you about as well. So the final thing I wanna share just on the report, sorry, my computer's going nuts. Um, I, I do think it's important to share with the board publicly that our central office staff and our administrative staff decided to take the proactive measure um, to agree to forego their scheduled raises for next year. Um, all those folks were budgeted for 3% increases to their salaries, but everyone realizing what's going on with the school district at the moment, what's going on with the world at the moment. Um, even though people had signed contracts that said one thing, those folks expressed that they are willing to set that aside and wait to see what happens with negotiations with teachers and everyone realizes there's some inherent risk in that. Um, there's risk that, that flat 0% could be a reality that we're all facing depending on what the 
the state's dynamics are in terms of the ed fund. So I just want to um, acknowledge those two groups of folks for taking that stance. I think it's a, it's an important real step, but it's an important um, uh, just step of kind of commitment to the district and the rest of the folks we're working with that I wanted you to be aware of. That said, I will gladly entertain um, any questions that you might have. I can actually see everyone on the screen. So Tammy, if it's okay with you, if I just see a hand, I'll just, I'll call on folks and work through it that way. Is that all right? That would be fine. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Uh, Andy, I see you've got a question. Yes, sir. You have to unmute yourself, Andy. He's, he's working on it. He's working on it. He's still working. Don't worry. Andy, I'll tell you what. I'll go. Oh, there I you got are. It. Got you got it. it. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, can I join the webinar tomorrow morning? Yeah, we can figure that out. After this meeting is over, please don't let me forget, and I'll send you the sign-up link for that so that we great. can get you patched in, okay? Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just as a quick thing, um, this is Adrian. The VSBA may have sent a link. I know I got one this afternoon to join that webinar. I did. I can, yeah, so... Um, I don't know if they sent it to all members or just to the representatives to the VSBA, but I could send it on to Andy. It, that's great, Adrian. If you don't mind doing okay. that, that's wonderful. Because right. yeah. I signed up too. I see uh, George has a question. Yes, sir. Uh, first, a quick comment. I want to thank you for your um, statement on folks that are willing to stay at uh, current uh, status. Uh, you and your staff, uh, congratulations for taking that step. Uh, the question I had is in your information that came out yesterday, I know you're going to talk about it a little bit later, but there was something about uh, bus driver stuff, if you recall. And I would like to make sure that, uh, that we give careful consideration to that item if we're going to be in need of bus drivers. I mean, we don't know where we're going to be, but. Uh, yes, sir. Seems, that's a, so that's a very good, very good point. Um, one that I wanted to bring up with the with the board for discussion. I know that Gary has some perspective and insight that he'd like to share on that as well. But thanks for uh, for previewing that, George. Uh, Len, I see your hand. Yes, sir. Yeah, just a, a quick question following up on George's. We're going to go into more detail on the specifics in your plan that was that you brought forward right that'll come up later yes on the future okay. the agenda item a little bit down the agenda i plan to talk okay. more about that yes. i don't have the agenda in front of me so i just just double check it thank you Understood. any other questions just on status report do you want to then go into um your end of the year proposal if nobody else has any questions, Dave? Yes, is that our, and is that our next, uh, next agenda? It sure is, okay. Yeah, so at the bottom of that report um, is an end of the school year proposal that I shared with you. And just because we're, we're on camera, I will um, read through the gist of this proposal for you, even though I know that some of you have this in front of you. So basically, the, the Agency of Education, they've come down and said that um, even in the, the state that we're currently in, um, that schools should follow their school year calendars for the remainder of the year. So what that means is we've got an April break coming up next week. Obviously, you've seen communication from me to, uh, to staff and families about that. And with our snow days that we had this year, our last day of student and staff attendance um, would have been scheduled to be Tuesday, the 16th of June. Um, more background for you. Our school calendar has 177 student days, 185 teacher days. We are only required by state law to have students in class for 175 days. It's important for you to know, and this is not in the, the proposal I gave you, all of the days missed in the early stages, um, those have been granted waivers and um, have been counted as school days by the state. So um, we, in essence, have not lost any more school days, even with the, the COVID-19 scenario, because we're still delivering school services. It's still considered being in school. Uh, my recommendation to the board that I'd like to ask for you to um, land on one way or the other is I'd like to ask for permission to waive two of those days of student attendance, which would take our student total from 177 down to 175. 
The reason I make that request is rather than finishing the school year for students on a Tuesday, it seems more logical to me to allow them to finish the student school year on Friday, the 12th of June, and just have a clean, clean wrap before that weekend begins. The only dilemma that would create is that we would have staff members that would still technically owe the district two days um, in terms of meeting their overall objective. And you may recall, we had a scenario kind of like this a couple of years ago where we had an extraordinary number of snow days that were pushing us really deep into June. And um, we made an accommodation where we adjusted the student schedule and we allowed folks to use some leave time um, in order to, you know, not have to be around as late because the school year was ending when it was. So I would ask for the board to consider giving me the discretion to work with staff members in, in that way if that were the case. So the theoretical would be moving the student school year end to Friday, June 12th. The official staff end would be Tuesday, June 16th. But if staff had their work done, allowing staff to use leave time um, for that Monday and Tuesday in June, only if their work was done. So the ultimate action that I'd be requesting, I just tried to, to, to word that for the board if the board wanted to take action. And that is at the bottom of, of the document. It says the requested motion would be that the board forgive two student days for the 2019-2020 school year in accordance with the 175 day minimum set by state statute. Additionally, the superintendent shall have discretion to allow teachers and support staff to utilize accrued leave time or future accrued leave time, realizing some folks may be near the bottom of the barrel in terms of um, days that they have available to them for those last two scheduled days of staff attendance with the understanding that all end of year obligations must have been met by any employee choosing to utilize leave time for this purpose. Um, so with that, I'll pause and I'll take questions. I see BJ has uh, a question. Do you want a motion, Dave? Should we do a motion and then have discussion? If yeah, George has his, his hand up. <laughs> procedurally, that could make sense that we have a motion in a second and then move to discussion if that works. Okay. So, so we'll move. George speaking. Okay, and then BJ, did you second it? Is I will that second that. Okay, thank you. So then, discussion. So questions. So BJ, BJ had a question. Go ahead, sir. Uh, yeah, I'm wondering if we can make it also an option for teachers to, instead of just taking leave time, to take two days over this vacation. Um, I'm just thinking, I know a lot of teachers are, need the vacation, but they also might be willing to work, will probably most likely be working over this break <laughs> to pre prepare. I and understand if, what you're saying. And if they still have two two days rather than saying, hey, you have to take leave time. If you are going to work over break, here's two days for you as an option. If we were to do that, that is something that we could figure out and I could communicate effectively to staff if the board wanted to, to make that gesture. So just to kind of restate that, uh, BJ is saying, rather than have people need to take their accumulated leave time at the end of the year, they could work two days during the course of this April break to uh, make up for those days at the end of the year. Got it. Does that George change the motion? Um, it could. Why don't we finish the, the conversation and we could see if the, the motion okay. needs to change anymore? Is that, Tammy, is that okay with you? That's fine. Let's have some discussion about it and then we can amend it if we need to before yeah. we vote. George, you had a question. I think BJ's uh, suggestion is a good one. Uh, I, I would certainly be willing to amend the motion if we need to. Thank you, George. <laughs> Any other comments or questions on, on that end of year topic? Um, you know, I have one question, Dave. Is there yeah. any um, talk, out of Montpelier, about uh, minimizing the 175-day requirement by statute? Are there any talk coming out of the legislature or anything? No, there were rumblings that who knows what will happen with the end of the school year, would that be reduced? Uh, but then we got guidance from the agency early last week saying, nope, finish out your calendars. You need to, you need to stick to your local agreements and your local calendars and go with, go with the days that are required. So I don't see anything changing with that at all. Okay, fair enough. Len? Uh, Len, yeah. Um, I, I don't mean to make this more complicated. When was graduation scheduled? Uh, second Wednesday in June. So that would be the 10th of June this year. So that would be a couple days before the proposed last day that I'm suggesting. Right. Um, 
does that matter in terms of if we set it at the 12th of June, which is 175 days for all students, that will be okay in terms of the seniors as well, because evidently they'll be going two more two more days than they would have originally been scheduled if graduation took place prior to that. Um, true. I, I guess the best response I could give to that is we haven't figured out plans for what a graduation event might look like, but there's no reason that that um, that um, celebration, if you will, that's probably not, not the right word, but there's no reason that still cannot be centered around Wednesday the 10th as kind of the target date for seniors. We could easily, easily make that happen, whatever that's going to look like. Yeah. And I just, I just want to be mindful. Traditionally, <laughs> seniors have gotten out early. Yep. And, you know, in many instances don't meet the 175, but I don't want to go into that part. Um, yeah, understood. <laughs> we won't go there. Um, that's just the reality. And I just, I would hope that we could make it clear to the seniors that, you know, if we needed to do something around that earlier date, the 11th, that we would try to do that. I, I just throw that out there. I don't want to muddy the waters. I'm fine with the 175 days in the 12th of June. Um, but I always, sort of keep in mind the seniors. Yeah, I think my response to that, Lennon, I'm guessing Tyler would agree, um, would be a lot of our traditions are unfortunately being severely right. affected right now, but right. that's one tradition that we can still uphold, which is, you know, the, the seniors experience could end on that day very easily, the, the, the targeted and day. It, and again, it's not so much the graduation piece, because I know in many instances that's not going to happen, but but just to be clear that we're, we're going to ask all students to do 175 days, and I'm okay with that. But we could have the exception for seniors without question. I guess that's right. what I want to be clear on. Tyler, I think, has something to add. Tyler? Yeah, just typically, just for a point of clarification, um, that senior's last day is the Friday before. Their last day of classes is that Friday before, and then they'd have their graduation practice on Monday, Tuesday, and graduation Wednesday. So just Great. a point of clarification. That's a good point. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay, so um, George, would you like to amend the uh, motion? And BJ, would you second the amended motion to reflect what we've just discussed? Well, yeah, yes, I will amend to uh, account for the BJ's suggestion. And I will second it. Okay, all right, I'm gonna go through um, and ask everybody, I'll call the vote. So BJ, do you want to um, give me a vote, please? Aye. <laughs> Thank you. Maria? Aye. Len? Aye. Uh, Andy? Aye. George? Yes, aye. Doug? I think we're still having mute issues with Doug, unfortunately. But he's still there, so I know he can hear us. OK. Um, Adrian? Aye. And John. Aye. And and that's the order that you guys kind of joined in that I wrote. So for the rest of the meeting, for anything we have to vote on, so you have an idea, that's I'll follow that same list because that's the way I have it written down. So um, that motion is passed, Dave. Um, Excellent. Thank you, everyone. In um, thinking about the update and that, since Tyler is with us, could we let Tyler speak to what's going on at the high school? Because um, I know that several of us have had some um, parents contact us with questions, and maybe he can clarify some things. Um, I know we've heard about the elementary schools with some examples of what they're doing, but maybe Tyler could give us a brief overview of how things are progressing in the high school, what sure. a typical day is looking like, if that makes any sense now, since nothing's typical anymore. <laughs> well, you, you kind of answered your own question right there, or, or own statement is that, you know, nothing is typical. I mean, there is um, a definitely a, ver a variety of delivery methods for our teachers. You know, some are more comfortable than others using technology. Uh, I will say that some of our teachers who I thought were um, really scared of technology and always referred to things as the computer um, have really risen to the occasion and really uh, upped their ability technology-wise. 
so, I mean, we still have a variety of teachers who are all online, uh, with the exception of the kids who can't get online in their classes. And that, in that case, they are doing you know, more packet or paper and pencil activities or assignments. Uh, where some are less online and more packet and, you know, pen and paper project type work. Um, you know, our, at first, our, we had a lot of, um, I, I, I asked our teachers to send me, a lot of our teachers are doing some Google form uh, surveys of their students to see how they're doing with everything on top of their, uh, their regular education, if you will, or the, the instruction, uh, just to see how the distance learning format is going. And, um, uh, you know, at first, overwhelmingly, the kids all came back with, I'm stressed, I'm overwhelmed, this is far more work than I ever did in school, and please quit assigning things, please. Uh, and I, I, was, I was looking at some, uh, and this is across the board, this is not middle school, it's not just high school, it's across the board. Um, that has calmed down, I will say that definitely has calmed down as our teachers have kind of slowed down and realized what the expectation of kids is. And the expect expectation that we're going forward with is, approximately two to two and a half hours of work per class per week. Now, we all know that our kids are not going to sit down at, uh, you know, and do seven and a half hours of work while they're at home. It, it, that's not a reality that I think we can strive for. It's just not possible. Uh, so I think that two, two to two and a half hours of work per class per week is very reasonable. And it's also in touch with all the other schools in Rutland County. Um, Stafford, Melissa Connor, the uh, director of Stafford, just uh, reached out to us uh, yesterday to all the different schools and asked us what are our expectations of kids in terms of what are we doing just so that Stafford is in line with us so they're not going crazy and asking for them to do seven hours of work per class per week, something like that. You know, uh, the, the, uh, the range was two to four hours per class per week. So at us at two and a half to, you know, it varies. Uh, I think we're right within range. Uh, there was only one school at four hours. Most were at that two to three hour range per class per week. Um, you know, I did have a significant, I would say a significant amount of parents reach out to me feeling extremely overwhelmed in the first two weeks of our instruction, our delivery of instruction, uh, not being able to make heads or tails of anything. They just said that they're seeing all this work assigned and, you know, they're worried with, you know, what their kids are doing at home, if the parent was lucky enough to be home, uh, or also, you know, if the parent's worried about losing their job or being laid off and all those other stressors and the kids realizing that happening. So uh, my instruction to our teachers over the last two weeks was really to slow down, stop doing things on a daily basis and look at things in more of a modular weekly basis. So that, you know, there's a, there's obviously the students are, or excuse me, the teachers are checking in constantly. But in terms of what that delivery of instruction is, is more of a weekly focus. Here's your assignments for the week. I'm here to work with you and chat with you and help you through these, uh, these assignments. But this is what our goal is for week one, week two. Um, so that's been progressing. Uh, I have had some parents reach out to me and just you saw in Dave's report that we did decide to press pause on new instruction for this week, the week of uh, April 6th just because we saw so many kids that were falling behind. They were missing, uh, if you go into Google Classroom, you can see what was, uh, what assignments have been turned in and what are missing. You also, if you go into PowerSchool, our grading software, you can see what is missing and what's incomplete. And I, I was alarmed just by the amount of assignments that were not turned in. So I wanted to be proactive and make sure our kids had that time to catch up, albeit, there are some kids that are doing well with this and doing amazing and they're doing everything that's uh, expected of them and they're flying. And what my directive to teachers were in that situation is to let them grow their learning, extend their learning in what they're um, already doing, not just give a, a busy work assignment, but some kind of enrichment activity or assignment that would you know, extend their learning and what they're already doing. So an add on that would enable them to, like I said, grow their learning. Um, Again, I've had, you know, I, pu I put out the email to parents. Uh, well, actually, I, I talked with teachers on Saturday of what we were going to do for this week. I put my email out to parents on Sunday saying we're going to pause new instruction with the exception of AP classes and enrichment opportunities for kids who are caught up. And, you know, I got a, a varied response from parents. Some parents were, my kids don't have enough to do. Some were, thank you. Uh, I had more thank yous than not. Um, I did have one uh, particular parent that had reached out to me a couple times with some very specific questions on what we were and were not doing. 
And um, um, I since got an email from this parent thanking me because now our teach uh, a lot of our teachers are now reaching out, giving these uh, her children some more enrichment activities. So we're growing. I mean, this is something that you know um, we w- we went to school on March 13th, knowing that something was coming down the pipes, uh, and but expecting to be at school on Monday, March 16th. You know, and uh, you know, there's there are things here that I know that we need to work with with teachers, you know, across the board, and you know, for things I've been trying to do and work with teachers that we're getting better at, but now we're in a completely new environment where they're uncomfortable and learning. So I know that it was a long-winded uh, you know, <laughs> kind of, uh, explanation of what we're doing, but, you know, I got to say that we are learning. We are learning every day and we are growing with our students and they're growing with us. And, um, you know, is it perfect? It's not. Uh, I don't think there's anyone can say they're doing it perfectly right now. And I know that all high schools in this area are doing something completely different than one another. There is no similarities between what each school is doing. I know some are 100% online and some are 100% offline. So, um, yeah, I know. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sure I create some questions from that, and I'll be happy to answer those. But uh, you know, we're learning, we're growing, and uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see if anyone. Thank you. If anyone has any questions, can you see Dave? If yep. I'll, I'll handle that. I see BJ's hand. Go ahead, sir. Um, I just wanted a question, and Dave, you could probably answer this for the elementary schools. What's the encouragement between synchronous versus asynchronous? Basically, video conferencing through education through video con- conferencing versus social just through video conferencing, if that makes sense. Yeah, so uh, I'll give you uh, just the broader picture. And so, for definition purposes for everybody, synchronous meaning everything is kind of happening at the same time and asynchronous meaning that people can access learning or lessons at different times. BJ, what we're seeing realistically is our community um, needs us to be flexible with that. Um, The concept of doing everything simultaneously, for example, me saying, hey everyone, show up at nine o'clock for your normal class that's at nine o'clock and I'm going to be on video presenting and you need to be there. That creates all kinds of issues in our households. It creates issues with places that don't have adequate internet access. It creates places where there are children competing for internet access and competing for the resource of a video cam to engage in in that type of work. And we have those same issues, honestly, with our teachers who are also not only trying to teach their classes of kids, but they're also homeschooling their own children. Um, So because of all of those dynamics that are in play, we have had to approach the the synchronous and asynchronous in as balanced of a way as we can. And sometimes it's, it's an individualized situation. For example, um, I heard of one elementary school that, you know, the solution that one teacher has is the students that they're able to get online together. They are, you know, obviously interacting in class sessions that way, but keeping in mind our FERPA obligations uh, to not violate any student's privacy, we are considering recording those sessions so that someone that can't access it in the moment of can access it kind of in an on-demand type of format. And so when Tyler talks about us figuring this out and growing as we go, that's a good example of what that's looking like. Tyler, would you add anything to, to that from the high school level? Yeah, I mean, we are right in the same boat. Uh, at first, I would say we were very, um, except for a few teachers, it was really traditional Google Classroom, uh, online work, but still not in a, um, a video conference live session. That's growing for us. We actually have quite a few teachers that are starting to do these online, uh, you know, meet at nine o'clock, you know, Dave's example and that is growing um and it's growing to the point where it's more teachers are doing some aspect of that than others uh there are a lot of teachers that are recording themselves um i know especially in the math department math department's doing a lot of um pre-work if you will where they're working through a uh equation on you know there's a a app called black uh, whiteboard where you can actually work through the problem so the kids can see as you're writing as if you have like a document camera or something like that and then putting that out to video so the kids can see actually how the equation is, is, uh, is solved. Um, our science department is working on labs. I know uh, that uh, Dr. Hasenauer has gone in and actually done a whole lab for kids and recorded himself so that the kids can see that and then gives them a data set they can work through. Um, so that, uh, yeah, so I, long story short, yes, we are growing with that and we're starting to use that more and more often. Great, any other questions? Thank you, Tyler. Okay. Um, 
Dave, do you want to jump into the staffing adjustment recommendations that you want to discuss with the board? Yeah, happy to. So once again, this, this is linked in the report I gave you, um, but I also will kind of read through it just for the sake of, you know, our, our, our recorded meeting right now. Um, so I shared staffing recommendations with the board that I'd like to ask you to consider for next year. And I'm not as much looking for board action on this as I'm looking for board direction on this. And I will have of course, comply with your direction. The gist of, of these recommendations is we are concerned about what the fiscal crisis is going to look like, and we have no idea of the details. We'll learn more every day, but we only know what we know right now, which is not much. So to, to, to try to anticipate as best as we can, um, you know that in the board, the budget that was just approved by our voters, uh, we had a number of things that we targeted specifically to meet our board goals and we had some new positions that we have been preparing to hire um, some of those things and that were new in terms of positions and expenses include pre-k district district coordinator at 0.4 fte uh, 3.0 increased school counselors across the whole district a stipend for district arts coordinator the addition of an in-school suspension position at mill river um, overhauls to garden spaces for instructional purposes at Shrewsbury and Mill River, incentives for bus driver CDL acquisition, and we had some athletic costs that are also shared with booster clubs, some costs related to uniforms and some leadership programs and trainings, et cetera. Um, my recommendation to the board for consideration is the following. First, uh, our pre-K program is in its infancy as, as an expanded program. And I believe that continuing with that coordinator position at 0.4 FTE is critical to um, our operation to be able to deliver that for our youngest children. So I recommend that that stay on the books. And I actually do have a uh, candidate that um, I'm ready to recommend to the board when the, when the time is right. Obviously, that's not now. But... Um, We've, we've got that figured out if we decide to proceed with that. I do recommend, even though there are significant needs and we would like to have them, I do recommend that we can hold off on the hiring of the 3.0 school counselors at this time. Um, I recommend that we hold off on the district arts coordinator stipend. It's important to coordinate and align our, our K through 12 arts programs, but in light of where we are, it's my recommendation to hold off. Same recommendation for the in-school suspension staffing position at Mill River. It's important. It's a part of our goals. But given where we are, my recommendation is that we hold off. Because of the instructional components, I do recommend that we continue with the garden overhauls at Shrewsbury and Mill River and keep those costs um, planned to be expended. I recommend that we hold off on the bus driver CDL incentives, but I would like to come back to that momentarily. And I recommend that we continue with the athletic costs, partly because those are shared with our boosters, partly because that directly links to student activities. Um, and I think that we should continue with that as planned. To give you the big picture on all of that, the, the new costs that were put into the budget totaled about $370,000. Um, if we decided not to proceed with the things that I'm recommending we not proceed with, um, we save about $320,000 of those $370,000. So it takes those expenditures um, down by about $350,000. I'm sorry, $320,000 to a total of $50,000. The last thing I'd like to share before I um, ask you to engage in some conversation is um, I am making the recommendation that we hold off on the bus driver CDL incentives, but I need to articulate that Gary and I have significant concerns about transportation for next year in general. Um, those concerns are rooted in a number of areas. One, we have a commitment that we made to students from Ludlow that we will get a bus to them. We committed to that. We need to make that happen. So that's on the table um, as a part of our calculations. Second, our um, if I'm speaking in generalities, much of the roster of our bus drivers are nearing or beyond retirement age. Um, and so in light of COVID-19, in light of the dynamics of operating schools, we have no good sense of how many of our bus drivers will even be returning when we get up and running again. There's a legitimate concern there. Um, the way those things would translate out if we're dealing with less drivers and needing to go to more places is that would significantly affect how we design routes. We would have to centralize routes even more. We would have to um, adjust stops even more because there's only so many 
hours in the day and there's only so much time that we can justifiably have kids on board a school bus. So I need to just put that out there that regardless, we anticipate a problem on the horizon. Um, attracting new drivers is a significant focus of ours and is a focus that we have not had much luck with to this point, but that's a real and legitimate concern. Gary, is there anything that you would add to that topic beyond what I what I just shared? No, I think you were pretty concise with it. Uh, I have noticed our drivers when we were delivering the meals the first time around to be almost skittish, if you will. That some of them were clearly concerned about their, their exposure risks. And we have had some conversations directly, and I've also heard some stories, if you will, about a few of them that are, are really this at a point where they're deciding they probably will not be joining us again next year just because of their fears that this situation may may still be occurring um, by the time school starts again for us so it really is something that we just wanted to be sure we got in front of everyone that it is a potential concern we don't really know what's going to happen yet until they formally come out and say yes i'm coming back or no i'm not Realizing with our bus drivers not being union members, they really, right up until the day they put the key in the ignition on that first day and start driving bus for us, I'm never really sure if they are coming back or not. So uh, with that, one more thing, just to recap for the group, there are four areas that I'm recommending we hold off on the expenditures for. School counselors, art coordinator, um, in-school suspension staffing option and bus driver CDL. So with that, I'd like to pause and just invite any conversation. And I saw BJ had a hand up. So BJ, would you like to start us off? I would, but I also see Doug is now unmuted. Ah, <laughs> if <you> hey. first. <laughs> Doug is back. Hi, Doug. <laughs> Doug, we can't hear you, Doug. All right, we'll okay. hope that Doug can hear us. BJ, go ahead. Okay. Um, I would like to understand. I mean, my first thing when I look at it, we didn't do before. I missed it. <laughs> yeah. You're still up, BJ. Okay. <laughs> um, I wrote down like um, at, when you started doing your list. Even before you came to bus drivers, I said that was I was thinking that's something that needed to stay in the budget, the benefit for the CDL. Can you explain a little bit reason why you chose to keep it out, despite the fact that we really need a, and it's an ongoing problem? Um, yeah, the only logic I have for keeping it out is to this point, we have been unsuccessful with attracting potential bus drivers through a CDL incentive. So the thought was based on our previous lack of success um it may be a good idea to, to free up that money and see what that looks like for the future but that doesn't mean that's the right decision that was just the logic behind why to potentially exclude it uh, i see john mckenna with a hand raised for a comment well i think that money could also be used for other means of attracting bus drivers other advertising other efforts not just necessarily for incentives for existing employees to get CDLs. So I think it's gonna be very important to keep that money in the budget as a placeholder thing having to do with trying to get bus drivers. Um, I, I absolutely agree with you when you're talking about the dem demographics of our drivers with the COVID-19 uh, there's also a lot of talk that even after we get through this particular phase of it, there could be another bump in two to three months, which right. would be right around the time when we're trying to start school back up again. So nope. I think that's yeah. going to be a significant issue that we have to keep in mind and that we should keep that money in the budget for anything having to do with attempting to get members. Got it. Thank you. Thank you, John. Um, I see Gary's hand and then George's hand and then Andy's hand. So we'll go in that order. Gary. Yeah. One thing to keep in mind about the, the, the incentive program is 
even if we today had somebody that wanted to become involved in that, it's a good six months out before that individual would have a bus endorsement. So that program really isn't going to do us any good in its current form for a situation that might be occurring come the first of September, if you will. So there, there's a that's a longer lead issue for us at, at, at this point. Um, John, you might you might be right. There might be other ways to spend some of that money um, in, a, in a different fashion um, to have something happen sooner. Thanks, Gary. All right, we've got George, then Andy, and then Adrian. After that, George, go ahead, and then Maria. Uh, I guess I agree with John's approach to to the subject. I think that we ought to have some money available to be uh, assigned for you to use at your discretion in terms of uh, helping our bus driver situation, whatever it might be, whether it's advertising, whether it's incentives that somebody's already got an endorsement to join us, uh, thinking of retiring and could would enjoy join us. So that's my view on it. Okay, thank you, George. Uh, we have Andy, then Adrian, then Maria right now. Andy, go ahead. I agree on the uh, CDL money that it should be used any way we can to uh, encourage uh, bus drivers. But more importantly, uh, overall on the recommendations, I don't agree with the items that have been picked. I think uh, at this point, because so much is uncertain, we ought to freeze everything except the CDL money and wait till we get more information and have a much clearer idea of what's ahead of us. And unfortunately, I think these recommendations or freezing them may have to be just a very small piece of a much bigger and harder picture. So I'm reluctant to uh, just take one piece now. I'd say freeze it and let's get more information. Thank you, Andy. Um, on to Adrian and then Maria. Um, I have to say that uh, I actually agree with Andy. The number that I heard bandied about at the VSBA meeting just before this meeting was a $90 million shortfall in the ed fund so somewhere that pain is going to be spread around got it and maria oh i'm sorry okay maria on to you okay. um i i see it's going to be hard um i'm concerned about cutting counselors because it seems like counselors are people that we're going to need more than ever to support teachers and to support the kids when they come back because kids have been at home and some of them in really difficult situations and they're going to need maybe more support and more to helping figure things out. Um, I also, I know we're going to take a big hit, but I'm wondering, is there anything that we're saving on right now that we're not, we're not having schools, you know, there's overhead that we're not actually spending. Understood. Hmm. Um, so I'll tell you what, I saw Len's hand and then Let's go to um, Stan and Gary. They may have input on your savings question. We'll give them give them time to think for a moment, Maria. Len, what do you have, sir? A couple of things. Um, I, one question I have in, when we talk about ath athletics, is there any savings that'll take place because we don't have any uh, spring sports in terms of officials and those kinds of things? So at this moment, believe it or not, an official spring sports decision has not been made. Okay. Um, the, the VPA is and the athletic directors are making a decision April 30th um, that is going to be presumed to be a final decision about spring sports. I, I think we all have a sense on where that's going, but an official decision has not been made. I can share with you that the Superintendents Association took a stance that um, – we believe that if there is a season, obviously we should pay for those things on a prorated basis. And of course there will be officials and, and that type of thing. But if there's not a season, there will be some inherent savings built into that. Yes. Okay. Uh, just again, for clarification, when Andy and Adrian talked about freeze, does that mean not fund any of these? I guess I'm not clear on that. I can't speak for Adrian or Andy, but that would be my interpretation of, of their meaning. Is that correct, Adrian and Andy? Go ahead, Andy. Or Andy saying thumbs up, yes. Adrian, do you concur? Yeah, I, I mean, I'm saying freeze for now. I mean, we just don't have enough information to proceed with the hires that, that we have listed. Or, I mean, it, it's just not sensible. Back to you, Len. Yeah, okay. That I just wanted to clarify what that meant. And, and I guess... 
the last thing I'll say is from my perspective and, and agreeing with Maria, I really believe that we're going to need counselors. And I don't necessarily believe that we need, and, and this is coming from the person, if you remember when we did the budget, who was opposed to the counselors. <laughs> um, but I, I really believe that as the new year starts, and we're looking at what help the students may need. I really think that, that counselors are, are going to be a key piece. The other part is in looking down the road, when we're talking about the possibility of students coming from Mount Holly um, and that terms of adjustment coming to Mill River. And you're also, again, this is my opinion, you're also gonna be dealing with juniors who have sort of missed out on the end of this year looking at need, going to need extra help in terms of applying for colleges and things like that. And so I, I if I want if I could fund anything, it would be for the extra counselor at Miller. Okay. Thank you, Len. Um, I saw John's hand. So let's go to John and then Stan and Gary, I'm going to come to you on the question of any known savings related to being shut down for the moment. Go ahead, John. So if we, it, it sounds an awful lot like we are going to be asked to cut money out of our budget. I think that's a foregone conclusion. It's easier to cut a position that has not been filled yet than it is to cut something else. And 80%, roughly 80%, Stan can tell me if my numbers are right or wrong, roughly 80% of our budget is people. So if we're going to cut anything, that's where the largest savings can be found. I'm not saying that's where it necessarily should be found, but that's where it can be found. And it will be easier to not fill a position than to try to get rid of one. I don't disagree with the need for counselors um, in any of the circumstances that you're talking about. Uh, we may just have to get a little creative in how we do it, maybe outsource it or use some other means. But I think, it's almost certain that we're going to have to eliminate programs or eliminate something to reduce their budget. And that would seem to be the easiest place to do it. Thank you, John. So just for, uh, for clarification sake for the group, main messages I'm hearing so far to inform your thinking is I'm hearing a range from we should freeze and not move on any of those new costs, some dialogue around keeping money for CDL incentives or bus driver incentives in general, in the mix, and then a sentiment for keeping at least some degree of the counselor additions in the mix as well. So that seems to be the spectrum so far. Uh, Gary or Stan, anything you could share with us on perceived or real savings at the moment? Well, we certainly are saving money associated with heat, electricity, um, you know, th those type of things. But realistically, how much I don't know because how long have we actually been in this for at this point in time? You know, it's only been actually a couple of weeks. So we, well, I don't have a track record to be able to look back and say, yeah, we're saving about this much money every day. We certainly are saving money, but I Stan, I don't know whether you've got any more data than that, but I don't have anything else to, to base an actual number on at this point. How about you, Stan? Yeah, we don't really have any, we don't have enough data. Uh, in regards to uh, projecting where there are savings. I mean, like uh, John had mentioned before, a good chunk of the budget is, is people. So that's pretty much set for the year. And, there, you know, there's not going to be any savings there. So we're just going to be saving, you know, small items here and there. You know, it, you know maybe 100000 at, at, at best, you know, something that's not going to be significant. Uh, just one thing that you might want to keep in mind, the last time the education fund had a deficit, you know, they did, you know, an automatic cut of our education spending grant that was spread out over two years. So I wouldn't be surprised to see something like that down the road where, you know, they, they do some sort of reduction over a two or three year phase. Uh, I, thank you, Stan and Gary. BJ, I see your hand with a question. Yeah, um, two questions. First one I'm going to ask is how long before we have to make this decision? Because 
I feel very uninformed about what our budget is going, what cuts we're going to have to make. And that may be, yes, let's not make a decision until we know more, like Adrian Andy says. I mean, do we have to make a decision now? Can we no. wait? No, no. We're not, not warned for any sort of action tonight. This is just a discussion. Dave wanted some feedback. So we're not voting on this this evening. Right. And even if we were um, had it as an agenda item based upon the uncertainty, I would think that we would want to put that off until we have some more concrete information from the state as to what the expectations may be and what the numbers are going to actually look like. So this is more just to inform Dave for this evening. Yeah, I agree. And so BJ, let me piggyback on that. You know, so um, we built these into the budget and the budget was approved. So theoretically, my folks are supposed to be working on filling these positions right now. So if there's any urgency, it, it comes down to, for example, school counselors, you know, this is interviewing and hiring season. That doesn't mean we have to interview and hire right now. We have not begun that at all. And your conversation tonight gives me good signals for how we should proceed, which is not at all or very little at the moment is, is what I'm hearing. So whatever clarity I get from, from the board tonight just helps us with, with the concept of pressing pause. The board could take action and say, Dave, we don't want you to do these at all. Or you could just advise me like you're doing now and say, yeah, there's no rush on these, let's wait and see. And then my folks just don't move on the interviewing and hiring and filling of a lot of these. Okay, and then I wanna follow that up though. Um, the early ed director person. The pre-K, um, yep. The pre-K, I know that is a brand new program. I don't think that's going away <laughs> and kind of required of us. Um, can you, speak to your decision to try and keep that as part of a thing, as part of, like, besides the fact that it sounds like you already have someone lined up to possibly get the position. Yeah. Other yeah. reasons why you think that is something we really should be looking at, you know, over even some of the counselors, which we is obvious we'll need. Yeah, BJ, if you asked me to pick the one thing in this list that we should keep, it would be that. And that's regardless of the fact that I think we found the right person for it. The reason is the, the pre-K programming and, and doing the expansion we did filled a significant community need. And we knew that because our programs filled up immediately. You know, we were, we were tapped out from the get-go. The challenge of pre-K is it's a really complex regulatory environment. Um, there are multiple agencies from this at the state level involved. And there are a, a lot of legal logistics that go into that with that have to happen at the building level. Um, and on the way we're currently constructed, that pulls time away from both principals and pre-K teachers to have to manage the billing, have to manage a lot of the, the data tracking pieces. There's a, and you might say to yourself, well, hey, why can't someone at the district level just, just handle that? It's because we have to designate um, people for each individual site to be the overseers of that unless we've got someone to coordinate it. So in really simple terms, the regulatory construct of running our pre-K pre programs is really cumbersome. So having someone whose eyes would be on dealing with the state, dealing with the legal stuff, doing some mentoring and support, but taking a lot off the plates of the teachers and principals is probably the most important uh, position on that list in my mind at, at this specific juncture in time. So if you ask me what's the one thing that that we need to hold on to, um, at this juncture, I would say that would be the one. And then my next response to that would be counselor role or roles. And uh, I'm, I'm definitely sensitive to the importance of the, the bus driver issue as well. That would be kind of my priority list if you ask me to make one. Okay. Any other questions for Dave? Uh, I see George's hand, yes, sir. I've been uh, sitting here stewing, uh, uh, listening to all the conversation, and I guess I'm going to throw my uh, opinion of, in with Andy and uh, Adrian on the uh, let's be careful and freeze everything if we have to uh, sooner than later, depending on what we learn in the next few days. Okay. Any other comments or questions on that? No, no. Uh, Len, are you waving your hand there? Yes, I am. Yes. Uh, I don't have an issue with waiting to make decisions. Um, I think 
my interpretation, and I'll go back to why I asked that question about freezing, my interpretation of freezing is that we weren't going to do these, and that was the decision that was being made. And I don't agree with that decision. I agree we need to wait and see what kinds of things happen. And, and while I express my opinions of what I felt should be funded, um, I'm wide open to waiting and seeing what where is going to happen. And I understand the hiring process, but I think given the situation that we're in, there's a lot of people that are going to be in limbo in terms of the hiring process and, and job searching and, and all of those kinds of things. So I think, um, you know, I'm, I'm not as concerned about that as, as maybe we would have been in the past. Thank you, Len. So uh, Andy, go ahead, sir. I will reiterate again and clarify what I mean by freezing, and that is, as you use the word lend, is to put a hold on it. Okay. I'm quite convinced that we are going to be looking at a much bigger picture with many more pieces, and I want all those pieces to fit together. So we make a final decision. It's comprehensive and not piecemeal. So hold everything or freeze it. At the moment, we'll get more information, and I bet we'll have a much bigger plan. So I think, Thank Andy, you. yeah, Andy just captured the spirit of what my takeaway from tonight is. So first, I think this conversation is very good for the board to have in a public forum like this. So we need to start discussing these things and you giving uh, my team some direction about how to proceed is important. And and I, I think the logical move right now is we press pause. Um, we do not have to hurry to do anything. We wait for some clarity that will give administration and the board a sense of what the future may look like. and we can make decisions down the road. So we will press pause as of right now, and um, we can revisit this as often as is necessary or appropriate, if that works for the board. Excellent. Thank you, Dave. Thanks, everyone. Um, I think that Stan has uh, our auditor contract for us next on the agenda. Stan, are you with us? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah. We're presenting a uh, a three year uh, contract with our current auditors, our HR Smith. Um, again, it's for three years, and it's about a uh, two point seven percent, you know, overall increase from the last contract we signed with them three years ago. And so, I would recommend the board to make a motion to accept the the contract. Okay. Is there who, who will make that motion for me? Uh, I will do that. George speaking. Thank you. Who will second it? Lenny can second it. Thank you, Len. Any discussion? Any questions for Sam? Comments? Anyone? Hearing none, we'll do the vote. So, oh, George has a question. I uh, just was going to suggest to Stan that before we, uh, you know, maybe he do a final negotiation on the increase in terms of seeing if they will be generous in any way. That's all. Okay. okay. Um, so then we will proceed with the vote. So um, first, DJ. Aye. Thank you. Maria? Aye. Thank you. Len? Aye. Thank you. Andy? Aye. Thank you. George? Yes. Thank you. Doug? Aye. Thank you. <laughs> you got Adrian. me back, huh? Yay! <laughs> Adrian? Thank God for 23-year-old daughters, I'll tell you that. <laughs> um, Adrian. Adrian votes aye. Thank you. John. Aye. Thank you. So the uh, compact is approved. Thank you, Stan. Do you need anything else for us? No, I'm good. Thank you. Okay. So we're going to move on to now our committee um, business. So basically, um, we want to check in with everybody as we go through and see if you've given any thought, chairs of your committee, how you might go forward in this brave new world that we're experiencing, hopefully temporarily more than anything else. So um, Len, you're up first, personnel. 
Sure. Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I really haven't, um, and partially because I haven't even been back there. Um, but we would have scheduled um, the next personnel committee for the first meeting in May. Um, but I don't think we need to set that up yet, particularly if we're not going to be looking at filling these positions immediately, um, then we, our best bet is probably to hold off on that. And that way we can adjust and set up a meeting as we need it, if that makes sense. That makes sense. Any other input from personnel? Questions for Len? Uh, Len, do we want to continue work with the uh, evaluation? Evaluation. The, the, the difficulty with the evaluation is we were scheduling to meet face to face with individuals. And given the situation we're in right now, I'm not so sure how well that would work. I'm not going to give up on it. I just think uh, we need to, and I'll, and I'll need to talk to Maria and Tammy, we need to rethink and with this format that we're using tonight, that may be the way that we need to go to to finish it up. Okay. Does that answer your question, BJ? Uh, yeah. Um, I have had, oddly, more contact time with teachers than I ever have. <laughs> people. <laughs> so it's an interesting change. <laughs> hey, thank you. Hey, um, George, you're up next. Policy. Actually, I'm passing it back to BJ. No. Welcome <laughs> to my first oh, time. Right. Oh, my goodness. Right, BJ. <laughs> so I would like to report nothing has been done, and we have chose to cancel until further notice. Okay. Um, actually, a lot of this with so many things going on in the background, um, I will say that I did reach out to David to say, is there anything in policy that you're concerned about with all these changes? Uh, he said he has not run into anything. Uh, I would, I'm going to say I'd like the idea of taking a bit of a pause and letting things settle down enough. Um, and then once that does, I think we'll pick up and I think we'll, there will be several things that are highlighted that may have came up that we need to readdress. Um, so unless, David, do you have anything along that line since I'm new and <laughs> getting guidance? Okay. I have nothing to add, BJ. Thanks. Oh, George. Have something to yeah. add? Uh, just a, a quick follow-up. Shortly after our reorganization meeting, uh, BJ reached out to me in terms of uh, some questions on policy. I have not returned to his request, but I will. So be patient, BJ. <laughs> yeah, I'm known for missing the mark a few times too. So, <laughs> thank you, and I'll thank try you very much. Make that note right here, so I don't make that mistake again. Sorry about that. Um, negotiations, Adrian. Um, we are sort of on hold at the moment, waiting for the financial implications of of COVID and um, on a statewide basis, there's been um, more than one district that has had their teachers association reach out to them with a request to have a placeholder um, to possibly reopen work conditions language in the contracts. Um, I don't know of anybody who's actually asked for the contracts to be open yet, but they want to keep that um, at, with a placeholder. And that's about it. Okay, thank you. Any questions for Adrian, anybody? Okay. Hearing none, we'll move on. John, buildings and grounds. So I think buildings and grounds is fairly narrow focused right now with uh, keeping the building clean and uh, following along behind people uh, as they come in and out. Um, my only thought is that uh, Gary have a resource if he needs it. Otherwise, I think we're going to put a hold on our meetings as well until things become a little bit clearer. Um, if there's anything that Gary feels he needs support for, we will be there for him, whether it's buildings and grounds or even transportation with drivers if he needs that assistance. Otherwise, we'll be holding off. Oh, great. Any questions? 
No? No? Okay. Um, and then we'll move on to Maria, community engagement. Maria, are you there? She's she's trying, trying to okay. unmute. I think. There. Um, so I, as promised, I have a draft community engagement plan for the board, and I'm sorry I didn't get it to you before the meeting, but I did get it to Anne, so it will go along with the minutes. Um, so I won't get into it right now. But if you could all read it and send feedback, that would be great. Um, I, we are going to, we haven't, we haven't met since we last were able to meet in person, but I'm expecting that if we can get some feedback from the rest of you in the next week, that hopefully we'll be able to meet the week after that, but remotely. And I'm wondering, Ryan, do we come, how, do we have a system for how committees are going to meet remotely if we want to? Is this what we should be following? Brian, do you, did you hear that question directed to you? You may not even be on there. Um, <laughs> I'll jump in here because this has been my life <laughs> for the past two weeks. Um, I do believe you guys are settling a little bit on Google Meet. And they're very easy to set up. Uh, basically, Maria, just set up a calendar event. And... Once you do that, you can check to add a meeting like this. Um, the only thing you have to keep in mind is people who are coming in from the outside who do not have a Mill River Schools domain, you will have to click approve, approve, approve. So there's not uh, usually a competition for coming. <laughs> Okay. Who's that strange guy on the screen right there? <laughs> Thank you, Brian. Thank you, BJ. BJ. Thanks, Maria. We will look for that and get you some feedback in the next week. Uh, maybe could you possibly after this meeting tomorrow, maybe sometime, just send everybody an email, like formally requesting that so that it's in the forefront of everyone's mind. I was intending to do that too. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. All right. So now we move on to Andy and the finance committee. There. Well, up until about a day and a half ago, I would I was saying there was no need for the finance committee to meet until uh, late June, as we always do. But that has suddenly changed. I'm sure the finance committee meeting committee will be meeting. Uh, I will. After the webinar, if any other information we get, be conferring with Dave and Stan and Tammy, and then uh, have a sense of where we are, what we need to do, and we will call a committee meeting and go from there. Good. So everybody stay tuned. Now, I get to do the numbers. I have them over here. So these are the pay orders. And they are dated March 31st, 2020, from the general fund, 11,239, try that one again, $11,239.09. That is the only pay order there. So the total is $11,239.09. Now, wait a second. I will go over to payroll. And they are as follows. On March 13th, 2020, winter coaches, the total of $32,341.07. March 13th, regular payroll, $454,182.63. March 16th, regular payroll, $4,970.59. March 27th, 2020, regular payroll, $441,231.37. Finally, on April 1st, 2020, regular payroll, $3,112.76. The total of these payrolls is $935,838.42. 
I move the pay orders and payroll be approved as read. I'll second, George. Thank you, George. Any discussion, George, Doug? Uh, well, I haven't had a chance to review anything for quite a few days. I'm sure Doug probably hasn't either. But what I was curious about is that if uh, uh, Stan, uh, do you have a group working every day or often in terms of the finances or uh, Karen to email us just the, what do you call it, the register that shows things item by item uh, versus we don't need to see the, the invoices or any of that stuff in terms of being able to review the pay orders. Now, in terms of the uh, payroll, uh, unless somebody's going to sneak a strange name in there, I you know I don't necessarily need to review that because it's pretty well set in terms of uh, the budget. So I'd be happy to do it that way if that's uh, something that folks would like to have happen. Input from anybody? That's kind of what we did with the last one. I believe that Karen emailed everything over and uh, I saw it and I believe you and Doug both saw it also. Um, yeah, can I, can I talk, then, uh, Tammy? Yes, Doug, go ahead. Uh, yeah, Stan sent us around um, some of the uh, some of the A's that we had and some of the words once that we went through. It's kind of interesting to see it on the little screen as it was under the big piece of paper. I didn't find anything I thought was a problem. Seemed to be uh, well in line. Every time I see a, a eight or a nine digit number in there, I get a little nervous. There was one of those there this time, but seems to be okay with me as far as I'm concerned. Okay, and you're good, Doug, with working with George and continuing to review it that way? Yeah, I don't have a problem with that at all. Great. Thank you both. Is there any other discussion with regard to the pay orders or the payroll before we vote? Hearing none, we will go through. And BJ, may I have your vote? Uh, yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. So the pay orders and the payroll are approved as read. Um, and I presume, Stan, that Karen will uh, transmit the sign-off sheet like she did last time, or do I have it ready? Is that here? Oh, yes. Look, I can just sign that and send it back then. Will that oh, work? Great. Yep, great. Okay, I will do that. Um, and then we will go on to George's favorite part of the meeting, transact other legal business. George, do you have anything for us? Oh, yes, I do. I'm looking for any interested board members in joining me in a partnership. I'm going to start up a new manufacturing company because apparently there's a big market for toilet tissue. So I figured we'd start manufacturing toilet tissue and put it out <laughs> as a fundraiser for the school. <laughs> so, so many puns we could go with there, George, but we won't do it. <laughs> well, it's a very popular. It's a very popular item. I mean, people are really tearing it up. <laughs> <laughs> other legal business to discuss i have two questions if i could please sure, Doug. question number one the uh the sign sheets for the pay orders and stuff are they going to be available at the school or they're coming to us or how's that working they're attached to the attachment that um and attached to the meeting warning that lists the pay okay. so if you can sign yours and i can sign mine um, we're indicated and get that back. Would that work, Stan? Okay, that'll work. That'll work for me. No, that's perfect. Question two is for Dave. Um, I know it's a lot premature and there's so much going on. Um, I'm having a concern in my mind. May the eighth. Um, separate from that, our Mill River administration and and staff are figuring out what do we do to honor and recognize these seniors who have been cheated from the, the last few months of their, their normal school experience. So those, those, uh, that thinking and brainstorming is in the works right now, but we do not have a plan yet, other than uh, we know that a graduation date will be June 10th, and uh, we have no idea what that might look, look like at that time. Yeah, that sounds good. Uh, keep me in mind if there's any uh, questions or any meetings going on to talk to. I, I'd, like to I'd like to tell these kids that... Uh, they put 15 years into learning this stuff, everybody telling them what to do, and this is their chance to uh, do what they want. 
I can't have them going out without have something for them. That's for sure. Understood completely. Thank you, Doug. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. Anyone else? PJ, is that a voting member you got there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he is. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um agenda building we're not having a meeting next week uh dave am i correct because uh, yeah correct we a while back we had moved next week's meeting to the 22nd of april um if if you asked uh just my personal opinion we probably could get away with not doing that meeting on the 22nd and doing the meeting that is scheduled for wednesday march 6th i think we could probably get a one a month schedule right now i'm sorry May 6th, not March. Um, we could probably manage that. However, if the board would like to meet more frequently yeah, yeah. in light of not knowing what financial dynamics may be out there, it might be wise to, to go ahead and meet on the 22nd. We could go either direction that the board wants to. Okay. Any input from that? What say you all? Uh, my vote would be to uh, Andy and uh, Dave to make a decision regarding and calling a meeting if necessary. Fair. Okay. Anyone else? Does that sound good to everybody? We'll plan yeah. on a sixth meeting unless we hear otherwise. I see lots of head shaking. So that right. works. Okay. Um, and what will we do? I will have some um an update um central office report in some format. Yes, that meeting. Yeah. So I mean, we could try to try to mirror what we normally do. We could do some central office reports. We could have principals on board to give you just some, you know, in-person updates like you're used to. Uh, we could try to keep this as as uh, standard as possible. Yeah, I think hearing from the principals. I, I think personally, I would like to hear from each of them as to what's going on. By then, we'll be um, more than a month into the remote learning and it might be interesting to hear from everybody and see what challenges and successes they have to talk about. You bet. Uh, can do. Can do. Okay. And and then I'm sure that we may have some a finance by then. Maybe that would be um sufficient unless you have anything else that we need to address. Nothing else for me. Anyone else have anything to add? Mm -hmm. I see, I see no hands. Okay. So then um, we will, um, I don't want to make us vote to adjourn, but can we just agree to adjourn by consensus so we don't have to go through a roll call? Does that sound good to everybody? I see lots of thumbs up and head nods. I think you're all clear, Tammy. Okay. Thank you all. Um, uh, we, with your help, we made it through, I think, pretty darn good for our first attempt at this. So thank you all for um, joining us and, and um, sticking it out and dealing with me having to call everybody out one by one. <laughs> so um, thank you thank all. You. Have a good night. Thank nope. you. Well done, thank everyone. You. Thank you. Good night. Bye-bye. How do I cut this off? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>